Do you ever worry that you just can't remember that name or where you parked your car or that book? The fact is the brain does change as we age, but the good news is there are some simple steps you can take to improve your brain function. And Brain Performance Center in Dallas CEO Lee Richardson joins me this morning. Good morning, so good nice morning. to have you. I was reading your research this morning and it is enough to give one pause. The brain does change and it actually begins earlier than a lot of people think. It does, you know, the sad part is is that brain's not fully developed until you're in your mid to late 20s. And then by the time you hit 30, it starts to decline. And then the next major change happens when you're in your 40s, 50s. What happens then? Well, you know, the brain is always changing. There's times of life that one part of the brain is working better than the other mm -hmm. part. But by the time you get to 40, the brain has started to plateau. By the time you get to 50, you'll start to see changes in your ability for you know, deep thinking, reasoning skills, things that's more of a complex process. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you have to analyze it, evaluate it, understand it, conceptualize it, be creative in how you think about it. So those are the, the areas where around 50 you'll start to see some changes. And 60s? And 60s, it's more on memory. You know, and it's normal. Can't remember that person's name. And, and it's normal. That you know. <laughs> not to remember that name. But if, <clears throat> if you're, instead of calling the person a name, you refer to the person as a dog or a cat, that's not normal. <laughs> okay, so now that we know the distinction, you do say don't worry about it, but there are some concrete steps that you can take that will help you improve your brain function. First of all, you talk about how important exercise is. Absolutely. You know, there was a study, a British study done that had oh, almost 500,000 people in it, mm -hmm. and it showed the stronger the person, the stronger the cognitive brain functioning. And it's not that you have to exercise for two hours a day. It doesn't have to be a high level of intensity. Any exercise that you do, like it strengthens your body, it will strengthen your mind. Just real quickly, how does that work? What happens? Well, this is your central nervous system. This controls the rest of this. This is the autonomic nervous system. Okay. If this is stronger, this drives this. Okay. Let's talk about, um, you mentioned you, you talk about exercise, you mentioned challenging yourself. Um, what are a couple of brain exercises that women nearing their 50s, for instance, could do? Well, ladies, nearing their 50s, we've all done aerobics. I'm going to challenge you to do some neurobics. 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 And one of the first things that you can do, particularly for memory, is read aloud to yourself. By reading aloud to yourself, you'll improve your memory. And it's not so much the motor aspect of producing the words, it's the self-involvement. So that's something you can Who do. knew? What else? Uh, another thing for you ladies out there that love to cook, and you're really good, you use all kinds of herbs and spices, and you know just the right amount to put in, and you don't even need to look at a resume, and you can recognize them by seeing them. I challenge, challenge the brain. Can you recognize them by smell? Turn those labels around and see if you can pick a jar up. Fascinating. And smell that and recognize what that is. You know, it's simple things. Changing the way, challenging your brain. Absolutely. With different things. Okay, what about music? You mentioned music. What, what, what do you need to do with music? Music can be very healing for the brain. And music research shows music will reduce pain. It will reduce stress. It will, you know, and musicians, it's interesting, musicians and people that are bilingual, it's shown that they have a, their memory is stronger in later age. Really? So would it help you to learn a language? Would Absol that be a good thing? Absolutely. Okay, so you've got another tip to work with. You can uh, smell your food, learn a language, and uh, it's easy. read to yourself. Okay, um, so um, you three foods that would be good. Well, you bring up a really good point, because you want to take a good brain and go bad, it has to do with what you eat. So first off, I'm going to talk about two bad foods. Inflammation can cause neurological damage to the brain. More and, research shows that than ever. And sugar, as much as we all love it, and it's part of our life, sugar is in everything you need, you eat, and you really need to watch that. The other thing, the second thing, is trans fats. Those things mm -hmm. that they put in that make that food last forever and taste so long, that creates inflammation. 
So if you're going to do one thing right since it's National Blueberry Day, let's promote blueberries. <laughs> Berries right. are great for the brain. Hey, real quick, you mentioned nurturing relationships. Does just meeting new people and increasing your social group, is that also Love good? strengthens the brain. We are social animals. Love strengthens the brain and the heart. I and love that. Heart. Thank you so much. Really interesting stuff. So if you want to know more about this, the Brain Performance Center is on Royal Lane in Dallas, and you can simply go to thebrainperformancecenter.com for more information.